morning, I'm in Ann Street and I'm standing opposite one of the entries or passageways leading from Ann Street through to High Street and there's a lorry just parked in the road. People pass through these and people pass through these entries all the time and I don't quite realize that these entries are uh, historic, they're iconic. Uh, they have been, some of them have been here since the uh, mid 1600s. And certainly, this is one of the best known entries or alleyways in Belfast. Pottinger's entry. So, who was this guy, Pottinger? Well, um, he was, he lived uh, 1789 through to 1856, and he was an adventurer and he was a world traveller and he was a colonialist and he was an army man and he, uh, he fought campaigns here, there and everywhere and travelled in China and India and elsewhere and he ended up being a uh, first colonial governor of Hong Kong. He was born uh, out at Mount Passenger, out at the Mount in East Belfast but these alleyways um, were the original heart of Belfast, these entries, these passageways. And they were narrow and they were ribbon-like and they usually had a, a, a pub on them and some of them still do, dating from that particular time, the, the mid-1600s, 1700s, 1800s and they serviced the dense residential and commercial uh, buzz that was going around in the city at that time because everything was was uh, geared around uh, financial transactions and money making and deals and sending ships out here there and everywhere so there's a big maritime connection and uh, industrial connection here there's a, there's a whole clatter of these uh, entries unfortunately many of them were destroyed uh, the, uh, in the blitz in the second world war but a whole lot of them, them have been refurbished and this particular entry here Pottinger's entry is the main one and it leads to the uh, iconic historic morning star bar and restaurant and it's a good place for buskers uh, apparently because uh, the acoustics are really really good. Pottinger's entry and there's the Morning Star uh, pub and it did dates. The Morning Star pub is one of our oldest uh, Belfast pubs that dates from 1810. That's a uh, a fabulous place to come in and spend a few hours. Historic pub here. And it's got it's got a a lion up here. Um, this is the winged land of St. Mark. So if you're ever down this way, this pub is not to be missed. Nice frosted windows, uh, nice tiles, and uh, it's pretty much on terrace of floor, I forgot to mention that. And it's pretty much the same as it was all those years ago. That's a good enough reason to come into Pottinger's entry. This pub was actually mentioned in the Belfast newsletter, one of the oldest newspapers, in fact the oldest newspaper in the world, and this pub was mentioned in the 1800s as being a terminus or a terminal for the Belfast to Dublin stagecoach. I spotted this wee notice board outside the Morning Star. Husband crash. You can read that for yourselves. This is the upper end of the entry. It's a quite a short entry. 
uh, onto High Street. Uh, it's one of the few entries that has its own um, gateway, so to speak. And this, this entry would no doubt date from the, what, the late 1600s. All changed here, all these buildings and whatnot uh, aren't the same, but the, uh, the Morning Star pub is to Pottinger's entry. Right across from Pottinger's entry is um, another entry, it's Sugar House entry, but it, it was blitzed, completely blitzed in the Second World War, and there's nothing really of the old uh, Sugar House entry left. But it's interesting because it was a meeting place for the United Irishmen, and then, of course, uh, uh, sugar used to be manufactured on it, so that's why it became known as Sugar House Entry. Good morning, I'm on High Street, and the Belfast City site Sears buses are all in fine fettle this morning, and I'm just opposite Wine Cellars Entry. See the city, get on one of the sightseer seer buses. They, they are a good value and you can barter with the guys and knock them down in price. But this is wine cellars entry. Leading to White's Tavern. Reputedly the oldest uh, tavern in the whole of the city. And wine cellar's entry was um, is, is <laughs> uh, a guy just trying to pass me there. Uh, it was a major, obviously a major centre for um, wine and spirits merchants, and that's that's where it got its name. So you come along from High Street and you're hitting White's Tavern on the right hand side here. Bit of a courtyard. There. It says White's Tavern, uh, 1630. White's Tavern established 1630. God knows how we've survived this long in this country. Uh, that might be a reference to um, the number of bombs and whatnot that have gone off over the years. So White's Tavern. And the um, wine cellar's entry was also known as Biggert's Alley. It's an old traditional uh, trading alley uh, or passageway. And these alleyways and passageways were centres of trade and commerce and hustle and bustle. And they were res residential, of course, as well. So uh, this, this place would have been at the core of Belfast uh, in the 1600s. This is where it all happened. 
these uh, these entries, especially this one, uh, wine cellars. So this is where the three passageways meet. There's another one down here. And uh, White's Tavern was the first tavern to be granted a, a, a license, a, taverns, a tavern license, uh, back in 1630. Um, between 16 100 and 1700 the tavern was uh, uh, a hotel and uh, all the rest of it. Um, in 1852 uh, Hugh White took over uh, the partnership of it and he died in 1880. But um, forever since the uh, tavern has uh, taken up his name, the name stuck. Then we're heading up onto Rosemary Street. There's the, uh, there's the notice boards about wine cellars entry and White's Tavern. Central Courtyard, Lanes Connect, High Street, Rosemary Street, Lombard Street. For over 260 years, the uh, area has been associated with wine and spread business. Building rebuilt in 1790 by Valentine Bro Jones, who was a wine and grocery wholesaler. Thomas Bateson became one of three local West Indian merchants back in 1752. He attempted to form the first bank in Belfast. There you go. Wine cellar entry. Off Rosemary Street. And you'd walk past this. But it's one of the most historic entries in the whole of Belfast. Some of these entries admittedly are not uh, exactly salubrious places, ex especially after uh, after nine o'clock at night, but nevertheless worth uh, taking a dander and certainly a White's Tavern worth uh, calling into. One of the oldest in fact, the oldest uh, taverna in the whole of Belfast. And this is the Lombard Street entrance to uh, Wine Cellar Entry. And this is the Crown Entry. And I, I didn't know this existed because you'd walk past this, you'd walk past this real quick. Uh, it's dark and it's gloomy. We can imagine that 200 years ago at night time maybe wouldn't have been the most safe place to be.
the crown entry. And it, it goes on to High Street too. There's a, an owl looking over everything. Look at what that's doing there. And we're coming out on the high street again. Nineteen twenty nine. Well, there's it in nineteen fourteen. There's it in nineteen twenty nine. There's it in 1933, and there's it in well, that's Ann Street, 1938. There's all the information about the Crown Entry. This is the entry to the crown entry, the gateway to the crown, you wouldn't even know where it's going. There's no plaque up to say, which is unfortunate. Good afternoon, it's mid-April and I'm in the corn market and it's bustling. Oh, the sun is out. What the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> That's why I started it. And temperature is around 15 degrees. I'm standing outside Joy's entry. And Joy's entry is named after um, the proprietor of the newsletter, the first uh, published newspaper probably in the world. Joy's entry was named after Francis Joy, who founded the Belfast Newsletter, and in those days it was a liberal newspaper, um, but uh, it has evolved in later days into a more conservative. Um, it was founded in 1738, and this is the uh, bump on the uh, the entries, enjoys entry in particular. I'm not going to read that down because I've done videos on Joy's entries entry before and the Belfast entries. But this is an interesting building here because this is the jail, the new jailhouse pub and restaurant, and this is a statue sculpture of Henry Joy McCracken of 1798 rebellion fame and he was he was a Protestant and he was a Presbyterian <laughs> and he was hung within almost sight of this uh, statue I don't know who the sculptor, sculptor was, uh, and this is the only statue that I've ever uh, come across as regards Henry Joy McCracken, and it's at the jailhouse uh, restaurant here. And apparently McCracken was held in this building here, beside me, and I, I had to find this out by, by uh, watching Document Belfast, uh, another YouTuber uh, who I watch avidly, 
and you should too, he's, he's well worth watching. Um, this uh, Henry Joy McCracken was held in this building and it's a pub and, and restaurant, a very fine one too. And he was taken to his uh, execution point um, in the corn market from this point. And uh, it's bustling with people in here, so I'll not go in and annoy anybody by pointing a uh, video camera at them. Check it out yourself. Um, this one here beside it is named uh, Henry's Public House after Henry Joy McCracken. And there's a, a, an ongoing audio as you walk through these streets now, which uh, gives you a wee bit of uh, history about the place. Henry's named after Henry Joy McCracken, born in 1767, one of the five active members of the society. So there you are, new statue of Henry Joy McCracken, and to the best of my good knowledge, it's the only it's the only uh, statue we have of uh, Joy McCracken in the whole of Belfast. You can just imagine him being held in there. It wasn't, a, it wasn't as salubrious as it is now. <laughs> and this is heading down to the centre of Corn Market here. Good afternoon, it's mid-April and I'm in the Corn Market and it's bustling. The sun is out. What the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> and temperature is around 15 degrees. I'm standing outside Joy's entry. And Joy's entry is named after um, the proprietor of the newsletter, the first uh, published newspaper probably in the world. Okay, Joy's entry was named after Francis Joy, who founded the Belfast newsletter. And in those days, it was a liberal newspaper. Um, but uh, it has evolved in later days into a more conservative. Um, it was founded in 1738, and this is the uh, bump on the uh, the entries, Joy's entry in particular. I'm not going to read that down because I've done videos in Joy's entries entry before and the Belfast entries. But this is an interesting building here because this is the jail, the new jailhouse pub and restaurant, and this is a statue sculpture of Henry Joy McCracken of 1798 rebellion fame. And he was, he was a Protestant, and he was a Presbyterian, <laughs> and he was hung within almost sight of this uh, statue. Don't know who the sculptor, sculptor was, uh, and this is the only statue that I've ever uh, come across as regards Henry Joy McCracken, and I'm at the jailhouse. Uh, restaurant here. And apparently McCracken was held in this building here beside me and I, I had to find this out by, by uh, watching Document Belfast, uh, another YouTuber uh, who I watch avidly <laughs> and you should too, he's, he's well worth watching. 
Um, this uh, Henry Joy McCracken was held in this building, and it's a pub and, and restaurant, a very fine one too. And he was taken to his uh, execution point um, in the corn market from this point. And uh, it's bustling with people in here, so I'll not go in and annoy anybody by pointing a video camera at them. Check it out yourself. Um, this one here beside it is named uh, Henry's Public House after Henry Joy McCracken. And there's a, a, an ongoing audio as you walk through these streets now, which uh, gives you a wee bit of uh, history about the place. Henry's is named after Henry Joy McCracken, who in 1767 was one of the five active members of the society. So there you are, new statue of Henry Joy McCracken, and to the best of my knowledge, it's the only it's the only uh, statue we have of uh, Joy McCracken in the whole of Belfast. You can just imagine him being held in there. It wasn't, it wasn't as salubrious as it is now. <laughs> and this is heading down to the centre of Corn Market here. And uh, it's probably around about this spot where Henry Joy McCracken met his fate, hung, and he was one of the main movers and shifters of uh, the 1798 Rebellion. And as I say, he was Protestant, and most of the leadership of the 1798 Rebellion were also Protestant and Presbyterian. Isn't that a laugh? Ahead of me is a sculpture called the Onion Rings, and it's rubbish. So, and if I had my way, I would have the statue of Henry Joy McCracken stuck where the onion rings are. Absolutely dreadful sculpture. That was Joy's entry just up there. This is Wilson's uh, court entry. Not such a well-known entry. But one of these entries or alleyways or passageways nevertheless. Still on Ann Street here. Very little of this entry would be uh, original. In fact, I don't think any of it would be. Wilson's Court entry. And its main claim to fame is the Mermaid Cafe. Wilson's Court. And the foundations of the Mermaid. Well, maybe the inner walls are reputed to be the oldest 
a domestic building uh, in the whole of Belfast. And if you stop and you look around yourself, there's wee plaques up on the wall to explain exactly what you're walking through and what you're seeing in front of you. This is Wilson's Court, uh, the information on Wilson's Court. Uh, Mermaid Inn is believed to be one of the earliest surviving domestic buildings in Belfast and was known in 1860 as the Rainbow Hotel and Tavern. First edition of the Northern Star was published on this uh, entry. You, uh, the newspaper was produced by the United Irishmen and was a publication which turned out to have a brief but turbulent history. The offices were attacked and destroyed in 1797, resulting in no further additions of the Northern Star. And there's the entrance to Wilson's Court. Leading out onto High Street and Bridge Street. Well, maybe this isn't High Street. 